Hey guys, uh, it's Camille. Uh, welcome to the new uh, program of mine, uh, The World uh, Today. I'm going to talk in this program about lots of interesting things. Today we're going to talk about why this world most probably is actually simulated. Why it's more probable that we actually live in a computer simulation like in the movie Matrix uh, it was shown than actually in a, uh, a so-called the real world. And I know it sounds crazy uh, but just listen to what I'm gonna tell you because that's incredible. So uh, first of all uh, our world is digital. Okay what does it mean? It means that there is a minimum length that there, there exists and it's called Planck length. It's, it's a ridiculously small length. It's like, uh, let me check, 1.6 roughly times 10 to minus 35. So that means if you take a zero and then put a dot and 34 zeros and number one at the end and multiply that by 1.6 uh, of a meter then so you, you get like a tiny something so tiny it's just crazy it's so tiny that even a proton uh, needs to be um, the, the diameter of a proton which is tiny in itself needs to be multiplied by 10 to minus 20 to get the uh, Planck length so this is the smallest length uh, anything can tr uh, can travel so what that means that if we tra want to move any distance from one place to another we cannot just move smoothly. What that means we need to disappear from this place and then appear from that place because we cannot be in between. The Planck length is the smallest unit that we can actually travel. So we travel always in jumps. So we disappear from one place and appear in another. And, and obviously it seems like it's a, it must be some kind of computer that we are in that calculated so, so quickly that it makes things dis disappear from one place and appear in another with such an incredible speed. Because, you know, if you imagine Planck length in, in one uh, millimeter, there are like, I don't know, it's a huge number of Planck lengths there. So if you travel like really fast, like with the speed of light, you know, there, is, there are lots of calculations to be made. Anyway, the universe is capable of doing that. So time is also digital. So there is a smallest amount of time that needs to pass from one moment to another and nothing can be measured in between. Time measured in between makes no sense whatsoever and uh, physicists are like really sure about this. So let's say if the universe started as a big bang let's say, uh, maybe it did, maybe it, it didn't, but if it did start so there was nothing, a point, and then suddenly there was a something that happened that uh, this small unit of time later and nothing happened in between because it's impossible in the universe and then something again and again. So things happen in this small unit. It's not uh, analog so it's not continuous as it seems. So all the time we appear and disappear. And that's, I think that is pretty incredible, right? Um, another thing is um, we actually, the reality only exists if you observe it, if you think about it, if you observe it, if there is no observer, the reality doesn't exist. And I know it sounds crazy, but physicists have discovered that a long time ago. The reality changes depending on whether it is observed by a conscious observer, like a human being, or not. Think about this as a computer game. If you play a computer game, it's frame by frame by frame is being rendered for you. But it's only being rendered where you are going, where you want to see. Where you are not looking, your graphics card your, and your CPU, they're not working on the frames somewhere there. Uh, and it's same with the real world. It seems like it's not being rendered. The, the certain properties of atoms, small particles, are only probabilities and, and they can be anywhere. And it, you, only when you observe them, when you measure them, you can actually establish that they are here or there or they are traveling at certain speed. They do not exist as such, they only exist as probability before you actually observe them. And that's incredible. Okay, so if that doesn't convince you, think about this. We as a civilization are obviously progressing very fast, uh, right now especially, and we run lots of computer simulations. And some of them are in forms of games and others are in some other forms like weather simulations, uh, and traffic simulations, all sorts of simulations. And some of those simulations are quite sophisticated. But as time progresses and technology develops, we will be able to develop like a really sophisticated simulations like shown in the movie Matrix. So 
sophisticated that people inside of them will not know that they are in a simulation or if they will know, they will, the, the, the reality will be like this one. You will be like, whoa, this is simulated by a computer, unbelievable. And this is what will happen. Now, so imagine we develop such a simulation and, and let's assume we will let it run. Yeah, it will just keep running and running. And all those other people or creatures in that simulation will start developing at an end. At certain point, they will also develop um, as a highly sophisticated uh, civilization and they will s start building their own simulations and one day they will build a very sophisticated simulation that can simulate reality and their simulation will be running and probably uh, one of their simulations because every civilization will build lots of simulations I'm, I'm sure about this and one of those simulations will also develop technology to run another simulation. So there will be simulations running within simulations, running, running within simulations for a long time. And if you think about this, there is a probability that we are actually a simulation within some simulation that, ha that already, I, I don't know, there have been maybe 300,000 simulations before, or maybe we are the first one, uh, but the odds are <laughs> against us being in the so-called real world. The odds are actually in favor of us being in a simulation. And it's mind-boggling. And on one hand, it's good because you can just chill out and think, blimey, this is a simulation world. The reality is amazing. I cannot believe it. So if you can keep yourself excited about this and, and being amazed, being at awe, I think that will help, you know. And I'm sure you have had some feelings and thoughts about this, thinking, oh, maybe there's something strange about this reality. Things don't add up, you know. And um, the more I watch various um, scientific programs, you know, about physics, quantum physics, astronomy and other things, the more I realize that we might be actually in a simulation. And, and another idea I have is that maybe our world is not actually, there is no actually universe, there is just a projection. So maybe we only exist as, I don't know, our solar system, let's say, and everything else is just some kind of simulation. So there is, I don't know, let's say a computer program, programmer, or our creator, whoever he or she is, that simply projects those pictures of stars and other things happening in the, in the universe. But really, the, these are just projections, they don't really exist. And, and we wouldn't know until we build a spaceship to travel there to, to actually check it or we reach the, the end of our world, so to say, our universe, and we, and we find out, blimey, that we, we either cannot go any further or we will just hit a screen or something, you know. Um, who knows? So that's also possible. And, um, I mean, it's mind-boggling, don't you think so? I mean, what's your take uh, on this? You know, do, do you reckon we are really in a simulation? Because the, the longer I live, the more I, I'm convinced that it's, it's really probable. And actually, it's mu much more probable than not. As I said, I'm thinking 95% that there is something not real about our world. There is something kind of odd, you know, some things that doesn't add up, you know. Um, or maybe that's the nature of a so-called real world to be so strange and brilliant. Who knows? Who knows, you know? Um, anyway, wh what's your take on this? And um, I'm going to make another episode of this one. Uh, I will publish it uh, next Thursday, 6 p.m. UK time. So uh, the world today, uh, there will be various discussions about various topics, not just scientific, but, you know, political situation, all sorts of things on so next Thursday. Then on Saturday, I will have how-to videos. On Sunday, I might have some Sunday specials sometimes or random videos. Um, so please tune in and uh, really looking forward to your comments, you know. So take care, guys. Have an awesome, awesome week. All right. And remember next Tuesday as well, 6 p.m. UK time. Next program, feel good now, right? So feel good now. Oh, I think that's, that will be enough. Oh my goodness, almost 10 minutes, nine, nine minutes, something. Yeah, oh, okay. That's the end of the video. Thanks, guys. Planck length, 1.616197 something times 10 to minus 35 of a meter.
Hmm. That's a ridiculously small number. <laughs>